last time we were we were chatting, um, we were talking about how um, the songs were all written before this past year, you know, before this COVID experience mm -hmm. on this album, and yet, and yet they're written for this time. Well, that, that's the thing. Actually, <laughs> actually, I actually talked to Malcolm Geit, who who's you know, poetry um, informs some of the songs in this album. And I've mm -hmm. worked with them a fair bit. Um, uh, you know, is it possible that some of these songs were prescient? Like they, they, they almost seem to have anticipate um, what we've experienced. And 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 he said, yeah, like there's some, there's some there's something in our souls that the, the artistic soul sometimes knows something mm -hmm. before it knows it. And a song comes out, and then six months later, you realize, oh, this was for that. Right. And this has happened to me a few times before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we've talked about this before, that you know, even to this day, a song from your first album, mm -hmm. Comfort My People, mm -hmm. the title song of that uh, album, uh, still speaks to me even more, I think, today, mm -hmm. uh, especially in this, in this given time, than it did when I first heard it. Yeah. If you, it, you know, if you write a song that doesn't have too much particular in it, mm -hmm. You know, like if you write a song on January 14th, I did this. And then she said, you know, th then then it becomes a, um, a basically a, a historical document. Right. It gets dated pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. But the, I think the thing about art is that if it's done reasonably well, it ends up um, being sort of open to the future mm -hmm. and can sometimes not predict, but can also speak into the future. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I did an interview yesterday, and I was telling this this um, interviewer that it seems like sometimes I write a song for my future self, and I've got songs that actually speak to me now in in, in better ways than when I wrote them, mm -hmm. you know. And so it, there's a mystery to that. Does it's that to still surprise you? Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, I, yes and no. It's it's not it's it's it, it doesn't surprise me in that it's happened before, but it's still it's almost like you know when my when my third child was born. I'm not surprised, <laughs> but it's still amazing and mm -hmm. it's still shocking and wonderful, right? So in that sense, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's indicative of God's timing, right? Sure. Because he knows the big picture. And yep. so he's giving you these songs yep. uh, because he knows we, we will need them. At yes, some we'll time. need them. And you're participating in a mystery. In, in, yes. a, in a, You have agency in, in that mystery, but not so much that you, you're, it's not like you're, con you're controlling outcomes. Mm hmm and I think with art, I think one of the things that makes art art is the um, is the willingness to abandon control of outcomes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, let it be what it is, and let it grow up and tell you what it is. <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes songs do that. Well, the next song on the album is a perfect example of that, "A Heartbeat Away," mm. because it is the best social distancing song ever. <laughs> yeah. um, but you wrote it before social distancing was a yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wrote it, my friend Tim Huff and his, uh, a friend of his, Iona Snare, um, wrote a, a children's book to, and Tim illustrated it um, to help children and parents that love children who are suffering from anxiety um, uh, disorders. To Youth for Christ people, I just have to put they that out there as well. Youth for Christ people, yes. yes you know, <laughs> and, um, and so they, um, they asked me if I'd be willing to write a companion song um, mm -hmm. for, for this little book that they put out. Yeah. So I thought I'll give it a shot. And so I ended up writing this song and I employed my daughter-in-law, Diana Pops, to help me with the lyric. She's a wonderful songwriter. Mm -hmm. And so we wrote this and it is what it is. But then COVID hit. And this is all about, it says, um, when you're lonely, confused, or afraid, think of me standing by you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really, it, now in light of COVID and the fact that we can't be together, I can't be with my grandkids. I, I'm, 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 my wife and I are suffering so much because a, a, a year of our grandchildren's children's life has passed that mm -hmm. we missed. You don't get that back. You don't get it back. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, but I want to sing this to them. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still there. And, and not just as a romantic sort of sentimental idea, but there's a, there's a truth to it that my love is present to you mm -hmm. and you're not alone. And so that's what that is referring to. Yeah. Let's listen to the song about social distancing, but <laughs> wasn't about social distancing. It's called A Heartbeat Away.
think of me standing by you. I am no more than a heartbeat away. Just think of me standing by you. The heart is like a home where you are not alone. First light of morning and last light of day. Just think of me standing by. So that was a heartbeat away off of Steve Bell's newest album, Wouldn't You Love to Know? And uh, before the song, we were talking about uh, the fact that you originally thought you were writing it for for Tim and Iona's book, but uh, but I think you were writing it for us uh, uh, during this time. Yeah, th- there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think one thing that we have uh, learned or have experienced, perhaps some of us for the first time, is the uh, a level of anxiety that is palpable. Mm. Yeah. And not just for children. I know, you know, initially the book was for children and the song kind of has that lightness to it that it could be sung to a child. Yeah. But the anxiety that we as adults are feeling is palpable. Yeah. And we need to know that our loved ones or our creator is a heartbeat away. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really, really important. Yeah. For all of us, like the world changed, not the same, just the sense that we can't do what we want anymore. But it's not quite as safe as we thought it was. Mm-hmm. Like, in a sense, we have to adjust to the, the, like, we know that suffering happens and bad things happen. But now we know it, like, all of us have this shared experience. Yes. It's and not something ha- that happens to them. And yeah. I hope it doesn't happen to me. This is this has actually changed our whole life. And in a sense, we've had to go through all of this mm-hmm. isolated. Isolated. Right. Yeah. So we've gone through things like losing family members. Yep. Uh, we've gone through things uh, in our lives and we haven't been able to do it communally yep. like we have in, in, in the past. And that yep. isolation has been injuring in itself. Sure. And you know, and the story in Canada, I mean, sure it's the States as well, you know, about even churches who part of what it means to be a church is that you get, you gather. Mm-hmm. That's what it means to be a church. And so there's been a pushback against the social distancing and, and the isolation. But I think there, there's an opportunity here, in a sense, to fast from being together mm-hmm. um, in one way so we can learn how to be together in another way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's an opportunity. Again, there's always a gospel. There's always a good news to, to everything. And, and I think that's the trick of this time yeah. is to say, where's, where's, where's the good news in this? Mm-hmm. You know, and what I find is that I'm learning how to be with other people in prayer. Mm. You know, that I, I close my eyes and I imagine my grandson or my granddaughter or a friend. Um, and and I and I 
in a sense, I can meet them in Christ because mm-hmm. they're in Christ and I'm in Christ. And that's the meeting place, mm-hmm. you know, and there's, it's, it's not just an idea. It's kind of actually true. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if I can quiet and still myself and let my imagination work, I can find myself in a room with them mm-hmm. and I can hold them. And I can hug them and I can let them see my eyes of love and care. And it's not, it's, it's actually true. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I love how I think in a, in a previous conversation we had, it was about how do we how do we gospel this? How do we gospel it? Yeah. Right. You know, how do we take what we've lost? Yeah. Um, and then look at that as a way of, of OK, how can I in this circumstance be Jesus? Yeah. How can I gospel this? How can and, I gospel this? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I think that that's I think that's the journey that the whole album takes us on. For sure. There's certainly that arc to it. But it's it's, it's the journey we're all on. Anyway, yeah, but this know. makes us acknowledge it. I yeah. think, uh, I think, as we normally do, we try to just make things go back to normal. Yep, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is. And we're yeah. spending so much energy doing that, as opposed to just sitting in the moment, in the now, and saying, "This is where we are. Yep. Um, it's not an accident." Right. So, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Where's the good news? And that—that's not to take away from anybody's present suffering no not at all you know or to justify suffering that's not what we're talking about Mm -hmm. here but if god is good and if god cares for god's creation which i'm pretty confident is true Mm -hmm. um then some in some way that is probably beyond us at this point there's gospel in this Mm -hmm. and so that's the question yeah and the gift of your music of course the gift of music period but the gift of your music in this album i think helps to take us thank you on this journey